Hey guys, it's R. Sean. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to talk about mergers and acquisitions, getting ready. Hopefully you're tuning in here, you're running a business, maybe you're thinking about a merger a year, two years, three years from now. Uh, that's the perfect time to be thinking about this. If it's a little bit closer, a little more impending, we'll still have some gems for you. just won't be as valuable. So um, you'll still learn a lot. So if you're watching this or maybe you have a friend that's running a business, and somebody's thinking about a merger down the line, we're really going to set you up and give you some of the key things you need to think about in advance to get you more ready for that merger. If the merger is more imminent, about to happen, maybe already in negotiations, there's still going to be some good, valuable tidbits in here for you. Um, so stay tuned. Glad you're here, folks. If you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time, thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. We bring you regular tips about business issues, things that intersect with business law. Try to help you be a more effective business owner and business leader. And getting ready for a merger is one of those most important things, whether you are going to be the buyer or the seller. Uh, there is preparation you can do, and it will make a huge difference in how the transaction progresses and really what the outcomes are, uh, whether there's unnecessary expenses and really how all things come together. So getting ready is such an important thing. We will be talking about legal issues, but this is not legal advice, consult your legal advisor. If you're thinking about a merger acquisition, definitely make sure you get your lawyer on the horn, talk to him about your situation. We'll give you some good ideas. We're going to educate you here today. We'll give you some entertainment. Uh, but you know, to really get into your situation, you need to get your legal advisor talking to you. Also, this is not financial or investment advice. So thanks for tuning in. Um, first question is, will you be the buyer or seller? And as far as preparation, a lot of the steps are the same. Uh, we really want to start getting the company in good shape, whether we're going to be selling or whether we're going to be acquiring. If we're acquiring, you know, a lot of what we're thinking about is preparing for uh, bank potential bank lending issues, uh, potential stock issuance issues, if there's some kind of stock component to this, whether we're selling stock to finance the acquisition or whether we are potentially issuing stock in exchange for what we're acquiring. So there's good reasons if we're the buyer to be getting our house in order. Uh, and then particularly if we're the seller thinking about going into an M&A, uh, it's absolutely critical we get our house in order because you can expect a good check over of all of your financials and your books and records is all part of that due diligence process. So uh, what will happen is if you haven't been through this process before, it is typically early in the acquisition process, uh, the buyer will ask the seller for a due diligence packet. Um, which will have lots of requests for books, records, documents. Here's a little trick for you that most people don't think about. Uh, while these due diligence checklists will be slightly different as far as format, order of document requests, numbering, because they often have like a numbering system for how they want the documents uh, put together for a review by the buyer, uh, the core contents of them are not usually a surprise. So... If you are a potential seller thinking about selling in the future, you can talk to your lawyer or maybe a business broker and say, what am I going to have to produce in due diligence? They can give you their due diligence checklist. You can then take that due diligence checklist back and start putting things in order. Uh, one way you can really make a good first impression as a seller is to have already organized all the due diligence, then when the buyer makes the request, rather than being flat-footed and running to your files like many sellers do, you can then just go in and calmly have a team reorder, renumber uh, your documents, which could be a very short exercise depending on the number of documents. Just renumber them and resort them based on the buyer's request, right? So uh, that can really save a lot of time. And it can really impress a buyer. We worked on an acquisition one time. We were on the seller side. And one of the things we heard from the buyer is because the records were so organized, because the due diligence went so smoothly, they were you know, just very happy. They were more willing to work with us. They wanted the company more. You can also scare a buyer by not having good due diligence, right? One thing you could do in the due diligence process is 
not have your records in order and that could cause a buyer to say hey i don't want to buy this company because they look like they're disorganized maybe they've got hidden problems maybe there's things they didn't disclose to us because their records are so disorganized or maybe there's hidden claims against the company because we didn't see all the documents so you want to get this right as a seller uh, and as a buyer you still need to think about it you know, regardless of which side of your equation you're on what you want to be doing to prepare is not only thinking about business and operational issues and all of the things that will be going between now and the time of acquisition. But you also want to think about preparing your books and records, right? How do you get everything ready? Uh, again, for the buyer, most likely that books and records are going to need for, for a stock issuance, a debt uh, transaction to borrow money to do the acquisition, or uh, something like that. For a seller, it is going to be the buyer generally that is looking over your records. So either way, you can start preparing now to put yourself in a better shape. All of this comes down to your records, folks. Um, and, you know, I get it. Uh, most small privately held companies, and I'm not talking to you directly if you're watching this video, uh, but I'm, I'm, you might, it might be true for you. It's probably true for more than not. Um, you don't have the cleanest records, right? Maybe you've... Uh, You've been engaging in a lot of transactions. You've got contracts. You've got agreements that you've entered into that you never filed away. Uh, maybe some of the corporate documents aren't where they need to be. Uh, you know, are all your accounting files and other things easily accessible? Past tax returns, etc. Right. So, so I see the, I see the gamut here, and a lot of it really depends on the availability of administrative resources at the company. Uh, and really who is in there, the mix of people. Some people care more about clean records than others. Uh, but regardless, if you are thinking that acquisitions are part of your future, and I have clients that do that, right? They say, hey, we're going to go out and acquire people. We're going to grow. If acquisition is part of your future, you need to have these clean records ready to go, right? So make sure you put them together. Make sure you have them ready um, and start getting them cleaned up in advance. You can fix a lot of these corporate record problems with time, right? You may have to go to your lawyer, do some meetings, do some other things, but you can get them fixed um, if you have time. If you're trying to do it on a short timeline, it can be very hard. Uh, as far as contracts, agreements, other things, again, you can probably clean these things up. It's going to take time. It's hard to do the cleanup in the short timeline you would typically have for an acquisition, but it's usually easier to do it in the longer timeline you have in preparing for an acquisition. Uh, you can start improving contracts now. And what I'm talking about here is part of that due diligence process we talked about. There'll be many requests that you'll get, and we're not really focused on all of them here today. We're not going to go through a full due diligence list, although we potentially could on a future video. Drop comments if uh, the due diligence details is something you're interested in. Um, but contracts can be improved, and you can improve them now. We're talking about contract provisions, which may be problematic in an acquisition. Uh, for instance, some contracts have a provision allowing for a cancellation upon change of control, and many acquisitions, most will have a change of control. So if you have the types of contracts in your business that are not going to survive or are going to trigger consent rights or other issues, uh, during an acquisition, then we've got a problem, right? We need to go back and fix that. And we can start fixing that now. We can update our form of contract so that we have a stop date, right? So let's say we're entering into contracts now that could potentially be problematic in an acquisition. If we get our lawyer and our team in to review them now, and we find out that there's problematic provisions, which may be a problem in a future financing or a future sale of the company, we can then update our form and start using a new form now from whatever date when we get all that work done to the date of the acquisition. We might be using the new form for a year or two, meaning that the, form, the contracts with problematic provisions that might hold up an acquisition would then be a year, year and a half old, right? We're getting away from the problem. Uh, we can fix a lot of those types of things now sooner than later. If we know that mergers and acquisitions is a goal, we can start doing things to position the company and the operations for the acquisition. So let's go back. If you're thinking about this seriously, talk to your attorney about reviewing your contracts and start thinking about third-party review. And that hits with the contracts in particular. 
Uh, people are going to generally look at your material contracts as part of the acquisitions. They're going to want to know what you signed, what you agreed to. Did you give up major rights? Uh, what is your ongoing risk from those contracts? Um, and are there consents or other things that will be triggered? Can people walk away? Let's say you have a big customer uh, and then you have a change of control provision. Well, that big customer can then just walk away. They're not contractually obligated to keep work, working with you. Uh, that may lower your valuation, right? So start thinking now that third parties are going to come in and review this stuff. And this is all about organizing the materials, making sure the materials are available, um, making sure that the materials have the best possible contents. And we're not now saying doctor records. We're saying change your processes, right? If you're... Um, a little bit you know behind on your tax returns get those caught up get those fixed if your contracts have problematic provisions uh, again don't go back and doctor and change them but start using better contracts going forward if your rec record keeping has been negligent do what you can to fix that within uh, legal bounds right go back and redocument things that can be documented find the stuff from the file um, you could potentially have some people sign memorandums or other, you know, things about what they recall from perhaps past board meetings if they weren't properly documented. There's strategies you can deploy um, within reason and, you know, legal bounds to clean things up before you end up in the transaction. Again, nothing to hide anything or create, you know, anything false, but to clean problems up knowingly and voluntarily before you end up in a last minute scurry to try to do that as an acquisition is pending. Because what you don't want to do is again, be in an acquisition situation. We talked about this a little earlier and then have the buyer look at it and just think there's too many problems. So fix as many problems as you can now. Uh, this is the best time to be thinking about an acquisition is before you have to do it. With the way the economy is headed and the number of problems I personally anticipate from what I'm seeing in the broad economic data, and we talk a lot about that on the Future Done Right YouTube channel if you haven't checked that out yet, um, but the problems I'm seeing with the broad economic data and the issues we're seeing, we could have a deep recession or maybe beyond a recession coming, and if that's true, those that are in good shape, they have their finances together, they're ready to go, uh, we'll be in a good shape potentially to do some acquisitions and grow through this. And on the other side, those that are potentially going to hit difficulties, may want to call it quits and sell, uh, will be more better positioned, more better, yeah, will be better positioned to uh, take advantage of market conditions if they are having their books and records in order and their position for a potential acquisition. So this is really a no-lose, folks. You can go ahead and start getting things done now to prepare yourself. Drop me some comments. Let me know what you think. Obviously, don't put confidential information in the comments because this is a public forum. Uh, but do say what you're thinking about and what you're doing to prepare for the future to the extent you're comfortable talking about it. Look forward to talking to you soon. Hope you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, like the video so more people can see it, and go check out other videos on this YouTube channel. See you soon.